Hi, Joe. I have this little animation that I put together a while back, um, and I just changed some of the boxes to reflect the names of the things that we're working on here, and I thought I would share it with you because it kind of describes the way I think about a program like this, bringing together all of the things it needs to to produce our end result. So well, anyway, here we go. I'm going to go through this. Um, what we're doing is, in my mind, we're starting with FSS, and in FSS there are these the, there are these components, these functions, these these deliverable articles, if you will. And the same thing within Element. There's all these different functions and components and articles. And in this case so far, we've identified a couple of them. There's System D that we've identified in FSS. There's AMF amongst some others that we've identified or that you're in the process of identifying for me. And uh, um, eventually, we're going to start spinning these things into configurations. Um, you know, bringing the, uh, these things all together, putting together a development environment to help us bring those configurations together. We're going to have to build some things like, like you mentioned, the SU proxy for one. That we're going to have to build independently, I think, of, of what we bring out of the other ones. Eventually, we end up with a configuration that I'm calling FSS Plus that has all of that stuff reworked and rewired, and that's the deliverable FSS with integrated AMF, if you will. And through this process of, of going through this, this helps me to understand what are all those artifacts or those functions or those components that are necessary in order to end up with the, the, the bigger product that we want in the end. So by identifying those individual um, articles, we can then start to lay out some expectations about how long it takes to get those articles put together based on how much work needs to be done and that's where in my mind the activities start to get laid in. Now we have these different articles um, laid out here and in this case I've chosen some pretty traditional um, activities that go along with getting them done. Um, you know requirements, capture, design, integration, implementation, verification, validation. Um, not knowing whether there are different types of activities that need to be done, additional, less, or whatever, in order to f adequately integrate all of these components or functions or articles into the new configuration. Um, but anyway, going with this theme, there are these activities that are necessary, and those activities can be done over a period of time. There might be some dependency relationships on, on uh, why they're done and what time frame they're done. Um, but each one of them takes a certain amount of time to get through and be completed so that you can release that article and say that it's accomplished. Um, um, some of them might have dependency relationships. You can see, for example, the AXBYCZ. It almost looks like standard waterfall. Um, and it kind of is because I set up those those dependencies on purpose for illustrative purposes. But it, it really, things usually don't work that way. You have some things that work in parallel and specific and agile programs. You spin through these things until you feel like you're done and you're ready to, to release. But there might be some dependencies between... Uh, independent components or articles or, or, or functions and that uh, comes to play uh, you know for example here I've set up a dependency relationship between SU proxy and the completion of the implementation of system D I don't know that 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 um, dependency relationship actually exists I'm just discussing it here for illustrative purposes and then likewise here you'll see this uh, AXBYCZ is dependent upon implementation of AMF being completed before its implementation can start. However, its requirements and design activities could happen beforehand. Once we have that kind of laid out with those dependency relationships, then we can come back to this from a matrix kind of approach and lay in uh, the manpower, the, well, what I really mean by manpower, but, you know, the man hours that we need, the resource loading that we need in order to get that done. And then separately to that, if we needed to, we would lay out resource loading for material resources as well. And I don't think we have those on this program, but, but uh, you know, I don't know, maybe there's some licensing and, and some tools that you need in order to set up the development environment. Um, we'll talk through all those types of issues this week as we put this together. Um,
I hope this is helpful. And um, I have the data that you've given me, and I'm going to be taking a further look at that this evening. Um, I've got some things now that I, I, I think I've identified, and that's really helpful. I've got some questions about some other things. So I'm really looking forward to our next conversation, and I hope this helps and that you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Talk to you later.